Hey, how's it everybody? Burr Brian here, and recently I picked up the Philips HD 9741 Air Fryer, and in today's video, I'd like to talk about some of its functions, and we're going to cook a delicious espresso tenderloin steak. So, let's start the show. One major contributing factor as to why I chose the Philips brand air fryer is because Gordon Ramsay, one of my personal favorite chefs, endorsed this product. It's easy to understand why Chef Ramsay would endorse a product like this because he's always been an advocate for healthy eating. In fact, he has an awesome book you can pick up on Amazon that has a whole bunch of fit, healthy recipes. Highly recommend you check it out. Philips Air Fryers uses a technology that helps separate and capture excess fat from your foods, making them healthier in the process. Philips also utilizes rapid air technology, which creates this super fast airflow, resulting in your food having a super crisp exterior, while the inside remains moist, tender, and delicious. Unlike a standard fryer that relies on oil and will often leave this oily smell in your house when you cook, this is just using hot air, almost like a convection oven. So you can see a reduction of 90% oil usage, which is amazing, again, resulting in healthier food. For most foods you would typically cook in the oven, you can expect up to one and a half times faster cook times using the air fryer over your conventional oven. Plus, cleanup is such a breeze. It's incredibly easy just to tear all of your parts down, throw them in some soapy water, quickly rinse them down, throw them in to dry, and you're good to go. The particular model that I'm using has a digital face, which is wonderful. I have control over the temperature, and I have control over the timing. There are also some preset buttons, which I haven't bothered to mess with. Everything that I've cooked so far has just been you know, me in control manually of the temperature and time. But I do like that for the convenience, they have some preset buttons. All right, so now that we've gone over the basic basics of this device, I am super hungry and it's time to cook this tenderloin steak. Now, the espresso chili rub that I'm using on this steak is actually one that I took from Gordon Ramsay's recipe. I just made some minor tweaks. I'll put the recipe for this rub down below in the description of the video, but real simply put, this has one quarter cup ancho chili powder, a quarter cup of finely ground espresso coffee. We've got two tablespoons of paprika, one tablespoon of white sugar, one tablespoon of cocoa, one tablespoon of dry mustard, one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of ground black pepper, one tablespoon of ground coriander, one tablespoon dried oregano, and then I've got uh, two tablespoons of a spicy cayenne pepper. To begin, we're going to start by seasoning the plate and slap down this beautiful tenderloin. We want to make sure that we completely coat all sides of this bad boy, which is why we are using a plate right now so that we can really go all around and press in. We want to make sure that we get a full covering every little bit of this steak completely covered in this delicious, smoky, chocolatey, sweet tasting mix. There, that's what we're looking for completely covered. Next, all we have to do is press the power button. We're gonna change this to 400 degrees, and we're gonna set this to 12 minutes, which should give us a pretty solid medium steak. We're gonna go ahead and pull out the basket. Now they do make a separate accessory, which is this special grill plate, which will kind of help sear the meat a little bit more and kind of help lock in those flavors. But we're just gonna stick with the a standard grating that comes with this. And we're gonna take our beautiful thick tenderloin steak, set this bad boy right in there. Right back into the machine it goes. And we just hit start, boom. Another thing that's nice about this is it's not incredibly loud. It makes a little bit of noise, obviously, but it's really not that bad. And now the moment of truth. Oh yeah, sizzling. As with every piece of meat you cook, you don't want to just cut it right away. You want to let it sit and rest so all those juices just stay in there. And you can see this is still incredibly juicy. So we're going to go ahead and Cut this thing now that it's been resting for about five minutes. Let's see what we've got here. We'll cut the little end off. So it definitely came out a little bit more done than I wanted, at least at this portion here. But let's go ahead and see how it tastes. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Let's go ahead and slice some more into this here.
Well, actually, it came out pretty darn good. I mean, that's a, uh, a pretty nice medium. I think that, um, you know, towards the end, it got cooked a little bit more than I wanted. But as we start getting in to more of those center pieces, it's definitely cooked really well. Incredibly juicy. And uh, I think uh, the flavor of this rub is incredible. The reason the steak came out more done than I wanted is not the fault of the machine. It's because after 12 minutes of time, I stuck a probe in. It didn't look like it was quite at the temperature I wanted to be at. So I put it in for another four minutes. And unfortunately, that may have been a little bit too long. But all in all, it still is incredibly tasty. Again, the meat is very, very tender. It really locked in all of those flavors. Now, I am curious uh, once I get the grill attachment, which is on the way, I really want to see if maybe that'll help sear in more of that flavor because I think the netting, the basket itself, really lost a lot of the juices and it contributed it to not having quite the crust that I wanted. I wanted it to be more crispy all around. Unfortunately, I didn't get that, but this is an incredible way of cooking. You know, oftentimes, like where I live, I live in a small one bedroom apartment. The oven that I have, the exhaust fan really isn't much of an exhaust fan. There's no outside tube that lets all the smoke out when I cook in here. It basically just goes up through the microwave that's above it and just sprays the smoke all throughout the kitchen, which is stupid. Personally, I probably wouldn't cook steaks in this all that often because I think the best way to cook a steak is the sous vide method and a hot water immersion and finishing it off with a nice solid sear from the blowtorch. But I do think that this is an incredibly convenient way to cook all sorts of other things like the chicken drums that I cooked last night were absolutely outstanding and they were done in about 17 minutes. This thing really is convenient in a lot of ways. Hell, if it's raining outside, you can't go out and use your grill, use this. Uh, if you, you're in a situation like I am where you don't really have an exhaust fan in your apartment, so you really don't want to use an oven or a stovetop to really smoke out your place, this one will produce a little bit of smoke, but it's really not that bad. So that covers a quick rundown of the Phillips air fryer and a quick look at a, a simple steak recipe. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure and leave a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel so you don't miss any new content that I put out. And of course, I always love interacting with all of you. So if you have any comments, questions, feedback, throw them down below in the comments section and I'll be sure to get back to you real quick. Once again, thank you so much for watching and as always, stay toasty my friends. We'll see you in the next video.